So today let's take a look at the new website I decided to make. It's basically an online calculator for a lot of useful formulas you can use in electronics. There will be probably a couple dozen calculations finally. It's of course still under construction, very highly unfinished. So let's have some fire extinguisher and together with my brain fog it should guarantee an absolutely amazing implementation. I'm showing the unfinished version so I can hear your suggestions and ideas. Not that I'm not going to make it finally, maybe completely my way anyway. The first calculation is, of course, Ohm's law, where you basically have the voltage, the resistance and the current, and you can always calculate any of these out of the other two. You, for example, have some voltage, let's say 24 volts, on a resistance, let's say 6 ohms, and you can calculate the current through this resistance at this voltage. You press calculate and it gets the result for ohms. And of course you can choose a different unit like let's say kilo ohms and let's give it 12 kilo ohms and it gives you 2 milliamps. Now it automatically flips 2 milliamps because it's a low number. I can also choose the, the output unit or its prefix is user selected. And I can choose amperes and now it comes out as a 0.002 amperes, which is a less readable number. But with automatic it comes out as 2 milliamps. It automatically chooses the prefix so it's from 1 to 1000. If it's less than 1 it flips to the lower prefix from amps to milliamps for example. And if it's for example more than 1000 amps it flips to kiloamps. And this can go either way. For example if you have a load, a resistive load that draws 10 milliamps at 24 volts you can calculate that the resistance of it is 2.4 kiloamps. And also the voltage can be the output. For example, let's say you have a current sensing shunt which is 20 milliohms and you're passing let's say 500 milliamps through it, it will give you 10 millivolts voltage drop on it. And maybe it's not much use but there is also an option to choose out of standard resistance values. Like let's say let's choose resistors from 10 to 100 kiloohms and you can see the most common values of these resistors. I can for example click 68 kilo ohm resistor and I can choose that I have 5 volts on it and the current through this resistor at this voltage is going to be 73 microamps and of course again I can force it to come out in milliamps for example and it's quite a small number I can also force it to come out in picoamps let's say just for fun and it's quite a large number now but it's more convenient to choose automatic and and it automatically chooses, it comes out in microamps. There is also the option to choose some common voltages, minus voltage, or some power supply common voltage, or common voltages of various batteries. Let's give it 230 volts from a minus and now my resistor passes 3.3 milliamps. If I wanted a different resistor, let's say 1 to 10 kiloohms, 1.5 kiloohms, and it passes 153 milliamps. This basically just calculates one thing out of the other two and I was thinking what the most convenient or intuitive way of implementing it. Now it basically works such a way that you leave one field empty and then this one is calculated out of the other two. Well, of course there is some rounding error now. Maybe I should make it rounded to some amount of decimal digits. If you leave this one empty it calculates this one and if you leave this one empty it calculates this one. But also as a default, when you fill in all three, it calculates the current out of the voltage and resistance. And if you fill in just one, it tells you to enter two values and the same if everything is empty. And of course if you enter some letters instead of numbers, it tells you right numbers only. And it also checks for division by zero of course. And it works with both decimal point and decimal comma, which is basically used, I think, in almost every non-English country. And it also automatically removes some random spaces in the numbers and it still does the calculation. Now, basically, no matter if you use a comma or decimal point, it converts everything to points. And of course, you can calculate any of these three things out of the other two. And I was thinking how to implement it. One option is basically to have three separate forms. One would be to calculate the resistance out of the voltage and current, one to calculate the current out of the voltage and resistance, and the last one to calculate the voltage out of the current and resistance. But having three separate forms or three separate calculations makes it cumbersome. And there will be some other more complex calculations where you are calculating one thing out of three other things, and then it would be four separate calculations. 
this quickly gets cumbersome. My second idea was to have three fields, basically, and a radio button, where you basically choose which one you're going to calculate, and then you press calculate, and it calculates the last one. But then I thought, isn't it just easier to indicate which one you want to calculate, just by leaving the field empty? Then no radio button is necessary. I like this idea more than having three separate forms, or having the radio button. And of course there are going to be more complex calculations involving four or more numbers. For example, calculating the capacitive current based on the AC voltage, frequency and capacitance of the capacitor. This involves four numbers and would require four separate forms if it was implemented like this, where some fields would be just inputs and some of them just outputs. This thing seems more sensible to me. The only disadvantage of this approach really is that if you're doing the calculation repeatedly, you have to clear the output field beforehand every time you want to press calculate. For example, I want a resistor to pass 2 milliamps at 12 volts, so I calculate it's 6 kilo ohms, and then I think, what if I wanted 3 milliamps and I want to repeat the calculation, I have to clear the resistance field before I press calculate again. Because if I change the current here and I don't clear the resistance, it thinks that I want to calculate the current. And now it basically assumes the current is the output and these two are the inputs. So using the radio button to choose which one is the output would be the more convenient option when you're doing calculations repeatedly, but if you do just one calculation you just basically fill in two fields and it automatically knows the empty one is the output and having to click the radio button would be completely redundant. And that's why I decided that in this experimental version you're basically indicating which one is to be calculated by just leaving the field empty. And of course there are two different ways how to deal with the situation when all three fields are filled. One is to basically keep the numbers in them and give you a warning that one should be empty, or the other solution is to have one of them as output as a default. In this case the current is the output as a default. With the radio button there would be way more combinations of things that can go wrong. For example, you want to calculate this, but you forget the radio button selected here, and then what it's supposed to do. The radio button might not seem like a bad idea, but in some situations it's quite tricky. And also there are going to be some calculations where you're always calculating two numbers out of the other two. Which seems odd, but for example when calculating a power dissipation of a resistor or a resistive load power, you basically want to enter any two of these and the other two always come out. And the radio button seemed possible until I realized this. You for example know that you have 5 volts on a 100 ohm resistor and this can tell you the power dissipation of it and also the current of it, but you can't choose two different things using a radio button. Or at least I think with my very poor programming skills. So the radio button idea just crashes into a brick wall, just like the modern society. It seemed like a good idea, but when some idea requires a common sense suppression for it to keep going, it's a dead end. So let's just indicate which fields are to be calculated by leaving them empty and I added clear buttons to each field, so you don't have to select the field and then keep pressing backspace. And of course everybody's screaming why does the website have to look like from the 90s. But maybe that era makes much more sense to me anyway. And I have already made a calculator for formulas in electronics many years ago, but unfortunately I never made an English version of it. But instead of just translating this one I decided to make a completely new one. And of course the calculations that are in the old one will be in the new one as well. For example, here you can calculate the resistance of a wire knowing its length and its cross-section, or knowing its length and its diameter. And you can do it for copper or aluminium. You can also add iron, I think. And there is a simple conversion between cross-section and diameter of a wire. Calculating the weight of a wire, knowing its diameter or cross-section and its length. Again for copper and aluminium. And here's how long you can overload a winding or wire at a certain current with a certain diameter or cross-section for a certain time without the temperature rising more than a certain amount. And here's Thomson's law, basically calculating the resonant frequency of a capacitor and inductor. 
you're just charging and discharging a capacitor at a constant current, you're charging a certain capacitance for a certain time at a certain current and it changes the voltage on it by a certain amount and a similar thing for a square pulse on an inductor the pulse has a certain duration, there is a certain inductance and there is a certain voltage of the pulse and it changes the current by a certain amount here's a capacitor in an AC circuit inductance in an AC circuit transformer calculation rectifier calculation resistor for LEDs calculation here is the Ohm's law DC or AC power the resistor power loss which I was already talking about discharging a capacitor via a resistor a resistor capacitor time constant energy in a capacitor current density in a conductor and phi 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 oscillator calculation solenoid calculation I might also add some formulas for battery charging calculations the battery capacity out of the discharge current and discharge time or converting between the capacity of the battery in milliamp hours and the energy in watt hours there will be finally a lot of calculations now just the Ohm's law is working but keep in mind that now it's still under construction and of course ideally all the calculations will go all directions and the old version had just one unit for each you couldn't for example enter frequency in kilohertz or megahertz or capacitance in nanofarads or picofarads and this will be improved in the new version and some code validator the board retribute on the table element is obsolete of course this is the fate of all of us eventually well now it's fixed using this bloody thing so that's it and if you like this project please consider supporting my channel on a Patreon or using the thanks button and I hope I will manage to finish this soon.